in the vast tapestry of human survival stories. There are tales that defy logic, bend the boundaries of belief, and leave us grappling with the astonishing capacities of the human spirit. Consider this. For those who endure a three-story fall, only half emerge alive. Increase that height to ten stories, and the odds of survival dwindle to near impossibility. Yet, nestled within the heart of New York City, amidst its towering skyscrapers and relentless hustle, a tale unfolds. A story of a window cleaner, not falling from three or ten, but an astounding 47 floors, challenging fate and defying every known law of survival. In the bustling metropolis of New York, Alcides Moreno harbored a simple joy, the gleam of impeccably clean windows. There was a sort of poetry in the way water met soap and the rhythmic glide of the squeegee from top to bottom. It was a dance of clarity and he reveled in every movement. On a brisk winter morning, December 7th, 2007, the Moreno brothers, Alcides and the younger Edgar geared up for another day's work. The elegant solo tower in Manhattan's Upper East Side stood tall, its 47 floors awaiting their meticulous touch. As dawn broke, New York City shimmered under a cold canopy, but the brothers were undeterred, ready to face what seemed like another routine day. Yet, fate had a different script. Upon stepping onto the 16-foot-wide washing platform, a mechanical floor sealed their destiny. As per the United States Department of Labor's report, the very cables meant to secure them disengaged from their moorings. Tragically, Edgar's side gave way first, pulling him into a freefall. The sheer height meant a heart-stopping drop of 472 feet reaching a harrowing speed upwards of 120 miles per hour upon impact. Moments later, Alcides too found himself in a deadly descent, the platform offering little solace as both were drawn to the unforgiving ground below. In the heart of the city, the aftermath of the accident painted a scene both tragic and miraculous. Edgar Moreno's fate had been sealed. His impact with a wooden fence was devastating leaving no chance for survival. Meanwhile, Alcides, against all odds, was found amidst a chaotic heap of mangled metal, clutching desperately onto the scaffold's controls. Astonishingly, he still drew breath. Eyewitnesses say he made an almost superhuman attempt to rise, only to falter. Firefighters, likening him to a fragile egg, treated him with the utmost delicacy, acutely aware that a mere misstep could snuff out his improbable survival. al was rushed to a nearby hospital. The severity of his injuries was extensive. Trauma to his brain, spinal column, chest and abdomen, and fractures spanning his right arm, both legs and several ribs. The subsequent days saw him undergoing a myriad of surgical procedures, from the insertion of a catheter, to alleviate brain swelling, to blood transfusions, totaling 24 pints. Dr. Herbert Pardes, of New York Presbyterian Hospital, told the media, in words that resonated with many, If you're seeking a medical miracle, look no further. Echoing this sentiment, Dr. Glenna Sider of the New York City Fire Department marveled at the sheer improbability of Alcides' survival. He cited that even a plunge from four stories bore grim odds, hinting that perhaps, in this unparalleled saga of survival, a divine intervention had played its part. On the morning of Christmas Day 2007, Alcides stirred to consciousness in his dimly lit hospital room. The weight of the past week's events bore heavily on his shoulders, 
even as his surroundings remained hazy. His wife, Rosario, steadfastly by his side, became his anchor to reality. Try as he might, the details surrounding the calamitous fall eluded his memory. As he sought clarity, one harrowing realization emerged. Edgar's absence, casting a glance around the room. The absence of his brother spoke volumes. The profound bond they shared, crystallized in that silent moment, communicated what words could not. Edgar was gone. Subsequent investigations into the tragic event unearthed unsettling revelations. The scaffolding equipment had not been accorded the rigorous maintenance it demanded. Furthermore, newly installed motorized cables designed to anchor the window washing platform failed in their fundamental purpose. They were inadequately secured to the building's roof. Despite the evidentiary findings, certain details remained clouded in ambiguity. While it was clear Alcides had embarked on the scaffold without safety harness, investigators argued this didn't conclusively indicate negligence on his part. Given that his window washing tools still rested atop the building, it's plausible he intended to retrieve his safety gear before commencing work. Alcides' miraculous survival continued to be a subject of speculation. Did his steadfast grip on the scaffold during his descent serve as a life-saving buffer, absorbing the brunt of the impact? Did the platform navigate the fall in a manner that minimized harm, almost surfing the air? Or perhaps did a series of ricochets off the building's facade serve to decelerate his descent? The Moreno brothers, hailing from the vibrant terrains of Ecuador, had journeyed to the US in the 1990s, buoyed by hopes of a brighter future. Their bond was more than just familial. It was one forged by shared dreams, experiences and aspirations. Edgar's absence created a void in Alcides' world that was palpable. They were not just brothers. They were roommates, confidants and colleagues. Their shared journey from Ecuadorian roots to American aspirations and finally, to that fateful scaffold. While time is said to heal all wounds, for Alcides, it moved painfully slow, each day heavy with the weight of grief and acceptance. For three long years, melancholy was his companion, the void left by Edgar's absence ever present. To Alcides, Edgar wasn't just a sibling, he was a protégé, a younger reflection of himself. The subsequent compensation payout didn't alleviate his emotional pain, but did afford him and his family a chance at a fresh start. They relocated to Phoenix, Arizona, the city's sun-baked warmth seemingly in stark contrast to the chilling memories of that tragic day. Alcides often remarks how the climate is kinder to his aching bones. Each scar that marks his body serves as a testament to the ordeal he faced and overcame. Although he can't break into a run, each step he takes while walking is a small miracle in itself. Today, Alcides still possesses an indomitable spirit. He jokingly mentions that he'd willingly clean windows again, demonstrating that his accident did nothing to instill a fear of heights. Yet, due to health constraints, he refrains from working. Alcides often reflects on the changes the accident brought about. He feels he's about 80% the man he once was. Sometimes, his thoughts taper off mid-sentence, a habit he attributes to residual effects of the fall. In introspection, Alcides noted a transformation in his outlook towards life and family. Before the accident, his self-worth was tied to being a provider. Post-recovery, he grew to understand the immeasurable value of his family's presence and support. A testament to this newfound appreciation came in 2016 
when Alcides embraced fatherhood for the fourth time. Perhaps, he muses, it's the universe's way of entrusting him with the task of raising his young one and passing on the incredible tale of resilience, hope and survival. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate your time and hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked what you saw, be sure to check out the other great content on our channel. Your support means the world to us and we can't wait to bring you more. Thank you again and see you in the next video.